Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Richard E. Castro here, the Speaking Mind Show. We're, we're here tonight. Uh, my colleague Sam is not going to be here with me tonight, but we're hoping to have a wonderful show tonight as usual. So bear with me. We're going to, we're going to really be in your living room and really try and dialogue with the people of these islands from Annie Gatta all the way to Joshua Deck, the whole Virgin Islands. We're going to try and engage the entire Virgin Islands with us tonight. So I'm going to open up a couple of topics. I'm going to talk a bit about the, the, um, the upcoming elections. I'm going to talk a bit about the, the sewage project. I'm going to talk a bit about jobs. I'm going to talk about the upcoming graduations. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year. We're one day away from June. And uh, as we know, in June, July, we, we get a lot of young people graduating, young and old graduating. So we're going to, we're going to open up those topics and uh, we're going to talk about jobs. And we're going to talk about some other topical things in our community. So ladies and gentlemen, if you know someone that's not listening, just give them a buzz. And remember, if you don't have cable, just go to www jtvlive.net and you can you can stream us live if you go to www.jtvlive.net so yes ladies and gentlemen i'm going to um, i'm going to show something that's happening right now on the on the um, on the sewage project so we're going to go to that and take a look at it and uh, and remember too it's an open show you can call me on any of these topics you know uh, this is the this is live today from Rotown. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 um, the, the project has started. And, uh, and the Honorable Minister will, will speak, he was speaking about the project as well. You'll, you'll hear. Now, this is the restart of the, um, of the sewage project that we had stopped. Um, some months ago last year where when we reached this point where we were going down very deep about somewhere between 10 and 13 feet the sand was caving in and we were concerned about the buildings around and therefore we felt it was useful to stop the project fill back the soil and go to a sheet piling plan meaning that the sheet piles will go on the side of each each part of the hole and hold the sand back until we I completed well the sheet piling project started today um, as you can see they um, they have excavated um, down in the down in the hole here uh, where they wanted to at first identify the the major power lines that come from Parkwood Pond to Longbush before they start sheet piling because if they damage those lines it will be catastrophic in terms of uh, losing power for a while and, and could be dangerous too so I believe what they've done, they've identified those. Now that they have opened up and seen them, then they're going to start sheet piling. That is what the big crane is there for. The big crane is going to um, uh, send the sheet piles down uh, before they start. And um, therefore, hopefully we get the project moving and get as much done over the weekend. We did have a little interesting glitch today, which is not normal. Um, you don't plan for those things. The big crane had a a major beehive in it uh, when they moved it from Parkwood Point to this point. When they started work this morning, the beehive became uh, very active in terms of, uh, and, and very dangerous in fact. Um, uh, one, a few persons got stung, in fact one to the point where we he had to be taken to the hospital to get some antibiotics and so on. I gather, having spoken to his father a little while ago, that he's doing a lot better. But still, it was dangerous, so we stopped the project for the day, had to go and get some exterminators. Uh, it's now about 4.30, we, we got the beehive taken care of, hopefully, and now they're um, on the way with the project. It's a weekend, we're trying to do it all as much as possible over the weekend to avoid the traffic issues on Monday morning. So we got a bit delayed, hopefully we can still get a lot done between now and, and tomorrow night, Sunday night. So. That's where we're at. Um, this part of it is to take the old sewage line that was across the roundabout, discard that and put in some new sewage lines. Th that one was there 40, 45 years ago. It's broken down, it's, it's, uh, it collapses on a regular basis, which causes some of the issues with sewage not being able to go to the, uh, the pump station and, and 
and um, in fact spill over in different areas. We, we're trying to eliminate all that. Um, so new lines are going to go around and around about in a different direction and go into the pump station that you see there. They're not far from it, but uh, hopefully we'll get this part of it finished. We have some others to do around and about. We want to apologize to the public for the inconveniences, um, especially on the weekend. We try to do as much as possible on the weekends and at, at nights to avoid uh, the traffic issues. Um, so we want to beg the public to bear with us. We want to get this job completed um, hopefully soon. Yes, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you saw a clip there of what's happening in Rotown as far as uh, one phase of the replacement of the sewer line in, in, the, in the Rotown area. And uh, as well, I don't know if I'm not sure if the if the if the minister really um, put it across the way I would put it across. But that line that that is being replaced has been there in, has been there in place from during the uh, the Bates Hill era, and it was it, it is something like a, a eight inch line, and and uh, and the it it has. It has served its usefulness. It, 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 it is, norm, in my opinion, it is too small. It is too small. It, the capacity is not there because uh, the, the number of places has have built up on on Wickham Ski. So the capacity is too small. One and two, I think the the material that the the pipe was made out of uh, asbestos, it, you know, is a, a kind of brittle material after after a number of years so it it, it has failed and is uh, it has to be replaced because failure means that no 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 uh, effluent can flow through it regularly so from time to time it, it, it blocks and and cause a lot a number of problems that's that's one of the primary reasons for the the foul smell in the road down area so Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the project has started, so that is something good for for development, I think. And um, and ladies and gentlemen, we you know we, we're going to have an open show tonight as well, so I'm going to have the numbers up there as well, so that you know you can call me on a number of these issues, and and we can dialogue. Remember, we're building a, a community, we're building a, a, a country, uh, you know, one step at a time. So everybody's input is valuable and valued i should say is also valued i'm going to I, I said i was going to talk about elections election reform voting um picture ballot election fraud um I, you know ladies and gentlemen i know you're out there and you 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 know of, of the recent um the recent election of the with the virgin islands party and and uh and I've heard some people talk about, you know, the 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 news release or, or the information that was put out after after the election, and if you want to talk about it, you know, call the show and and, and let us know, you know, how you feel. Uh, we must congratulate um, Honorable Fraser because uh, he is now in the leadership position in the in the Virgin Islands party, and. And when it comes to party as well, don't forget that we're, we're now faced as as voters. We're now faced with a number of parties. And of course, now we're going to have to get much more information than we got in the past because there's 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 a, a, a third, fourth, and, and maybe even a fifth uh, party. So we have to know the differences between them so we can we can choose appropriately. In other words, I think the new the new um, the new order of the day with elections in the Virgin Islands is going to be your, your 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 philosophy, based on the philosophy that the party is is putting across, is going to be the way people are going to align themselves. If you're going to just for example, if if as a party you're going to push a lot of social issues, maybe that's one of the one of the ways that people might identify themselves with you as a party and therefore support you. Um, if, you if you're going to be a party who is going to uh, be for people and, and, uh, and promote jobs, you know, creation of jobs, uh, the, 
the securing of jobs. I'm one of those people who feel that there should be different classifications of jobs and different requirements for different classifications of jobs and not necessarily uh, an open playing field as some people might think we have, which we don't have. There are some jobs that are just off limit for certain people and then there are some jobs that are um, that people expect people to do and, there is, and then there's the other side of the coin where there's some people who refuse to do certain jobs in the territory. So, you know, we, 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 need, to have, we need to have a conversation about this whole thing about jobs. Um, again, I said um, election reform. Presently, we have a system where there's no, um, there's no accountability as far as campaign financing. If I feel, if I get up tomorrow and I feel like uh, putting uh, $10,000 in a particular campaign, I can do so. And nobody asks me any questions, nobody asks me to report. And I don't ask the person that I give the money for to be accountable for the money. So, you know, we, we have a very loose area and it, it doesn't speak good uh, from a financial services point of view because it's, uh, it, it, uh, it questions a number of other um, um, money handling issues. Uh, so we need to get some, some, some reform as far as election is concerned. I, I speak about the voting. I think we should go to the ID card system. Uh, there are a number of persons. Well, we're still waiting on the, on the census and I'm going to talk about that. But if you're talking about the number of people or eligible people to vote, which were not el eligible before, and the fact that the returning officers may not know the people by their face or by their signature or by their name, just to name a few of the items that could identify a person, uh, an ID card system where you have to register and where you're given an ID card and you present that ID card before you vote, then it would prevent some level of fraud in the system. I, I didn't, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't make that up. That This is something that, um, that has been used in a number of countries, it has been tested and, and it's one step away from also using a die on your hand to ensure that you don't go back to vote a second time. And that is something that's being used in some countries as well. Uh, uh, and, and when you ask for uh, ec uh, external um, persons to look at your election, these are some of the things they might very well want to look at to see if we're in compliance with you know, the, the, regular, um, the regular things that go on in elections and, and to prevent some of the, 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 the ill things that can happen in an election. We don't want to, to, be, uh, to be rated negatively during our election. So the, the proactive thing would be, to do is, would be to put measures in place now while we have the time. We, we, I, I, am, I am saying I think we have the time. Even if we were thinking of uh, 2015, we still have the time. And I, I am one of the people who <laughs> believe we're going all the way to 2016. So I think we have enough time to talk. We have enough time to, to plan. We have enough time to, to tweak. We have enough time to reform. But guess what? It's hard work and somebody have to do the work. So I got the numbers up there, ladies and gentlemen, 3001949 if you're going to call and 3001950 if you're going to text. Remember, I put out a couple of things out there, election, election reform, uh, talking about the, the, the recent elections with the Virgin Islands party and the, and the, um, the change in, in leadership. Um, picture ballot, I, I still, I'm still of the opinion that um, we can move to a picture ballot for, for the next election. It's very straightforward. You take a picture of the people who are going to be running and the symbol and the name, and you have all three things on the ballot where a person can put an X. I have a text that coming. Let's see what, let's see what, let's see what Virgin Island is saying today. So I want to know why Smith fair to Anigata from Virgin. Someone explain to us, please. That would be something for the, the, the respective companies to, um, to, to tell us. But my, my, uh, my quick 
reaction to that would be that you know in a free, in a free market system you you have a, a situation or we have a situation here where uh, you know the prices are really controlled by the the persons who are uh, providing the service and we the consumers have an, uh, an obligation to either buy the service or not buy the service and while I'm on that topic we need to we need as individuals to you know to lobby and to and to share information and to and to um, and to discuss these issues and to show one another ways that we can save when we can save and support as well support if you know someone is offering you a better uh, a, a better fare in this case support the one that's offering you the better fare and and ask all your friends all your family everybody to support that same person and that way that is one way they say uh, you know financial leadership is a serious type of leadership because you're putting your money where you believe you should put it not where you want to put it, but where, where, where it makes the most economic sense to you and, which, and also which, which, um, which goes along with your philosophy. If you have a philosophy uh, you know, that, that speaks to, you know, to being vigilant and being, you know, being careful with your spending, etc., and you can save 5 or $10 on a trip, hey, I, my, my advice to you would be to, um, to, to do that. Um, I don't know the situation. I know that there are different fares, there are different um, different routes, different time, a number of different things that go into into a schedule. Not to mention the fact that some people are, um, are subsidized. We have another text that came in. They need to make sure, monitor the tour district to ensure that people who are not living there are not registered to vote there like what was done last election. That is, a, that is a good issue, that is a good issue, that is one of the issues, but um, check around. You would notice that it's not just the third, it's a number of districts where people are not registered there and they vote there. That, 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 is, not, that is not germane to just the third district, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's all over. That text did not come through in its entirety. Well. Send it, send it again, my, my brother, send it again. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. We, 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 we. Yeah, go, go ahead and send, it, and send it, the text again because um, I, 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 I think part of, the, part of the text speaks to a serious issue, and that is that we have persons who are, who are, um, who are lived in one area for, for many years, and they, you know, and they vote. In a, in a different district and, and, and if that is accepted so be it but, um, but it has to be understood by all that this is you know this is the way we are going forward and, and, um, and, and that's okay and then there's the other issue too of where I, I, I have been told that persons other than yourself or myself can move you into a district unknown to you if that is happening too that needs to stop I think there must be something put in place to stop people from moving people from one district to another, unknown to the person. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with this and, and, and other things. We're going to take a break for the, for the sponsors that make this show possible. So I'm going to take a break and I'm going to be right back with you. Say hello to the Digicel TL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4 inch display, front facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast so you can do more, play more and share more. And choose to download from over a million apps available in the Google Play Store. The Digicel TL700, the latest addition to the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Be extraordinary. Digicel.
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm right back with you after a short break. Um, one of the texts that came in um, uh, said I didn't read the, the text in its entirety. Let me go back to it. Let's, let's see what it said. The text said, I want to know why Smith fair to Anigata from Forging God is higher than Bobby. Can someone explain to us, please? So if someone who is listening could explain to us why one fair is higher than the other, let's, let's, let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Courtney? Another text came in, Courtney. They put them to vote in the third to get rid of Fraser. But they need to realize that the third district committee is hard-working people who get things done. They need to realize they can't stop Fraser. He is simply the best. And under that, all the rest watch out. 2016, the VIP coming bigger and better. The VIP is the party for the people and of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, seems to me like the campaign started. Anyways, we, we, um, we, we have that as a, as a topic up here, so thanks for that, thanks for that text, and we're going to continue you know, talking about the, the things that are coming up as it relates to election. Like I said, we're still, we're still also asking for election reform, we want to see those voter identification cards. We're talking about picture ballot. We're talking about putting measures in place to prevent election fraud. In other words, if I, if I subscribe to a party heavily, um, maybe, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe there should be a list of the persons or companies that's made public if you, if you give more than, say, 10,000 or, or, or 20,000 or, or whatever the, the amount is. And, um, and, you know, everything is fair game, you know, you know about board, transparency, good governance, uh, accountability, all those things. All, all, we, we, we are, we're in, in the same ball game. However, I have, I, I have a, a good friend in Boston, and I, one day I went and I looked up to see uh, what was happening, and I, and, and I, I noticed that the person contributed uh, $15,000 to Obama com campaign. Now, above board, um, transparency, etc. that person who I know, that person's information is out there on the internet for the world to see that that person contributed to Obama's campaign. And, and by the way, that person is a, is a white person, so it, it doesn't matter, it's not a racial issue. It's a transparency issue. And um, I have another text. Let's see, what, let's see what someone else is saying. It says, uh, Courtney Fraser is the one that did the spending to transfer people so he can get votes. And that's why I took the money but voted for OJ. <laughs> um, can't verify that, Carla. But, um, but what I'm saying is it, it, it didn't happen in one district. It happened in the election. And, you know, things happen. Let, let's, let's, be, let's be honest. Let's, let's, let's face facts. Things happen. And we should learn from them and we should move on. We should, you know, we should do the, the persons who are charged with this should learn from what, we're, what we have experienced in the last election and move forward. You know, take it as a, as a learning experience. There's someone who said, uh, you know, if you do, if you, if you, if something happened to you and you repeat it over and over and over again, you, you're not learning anything. So I'm saying, let's learn from it and move forward. Let's 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 take it another step. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an open open show, so it's three zero zero one nine four nine if you want to call and three zero zero one nine five zero if you're going to text. So let's keep let's keep the the dialogue going. We're talking about the sewage project. If you want to make a comment about that, it's on the way. Uh, the elections, uh, com upcoming election, and I have another topic that I wrote down here, which I want people to 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 log in on and talk about, and that is jobs, jobs in the Virgin Islands. We have two situations that are coming up very soon, and I'm going to mention them now. HLSCC graduation June 20, June 12th. A number of persons are going to be finishing a final f phase of their education and starting a new phase of their life, which is, which is uh, either going on to college or, or, or going into the, job, the workforce. We have some high school 
all the various high schools, the Brigada Flex, the Elmer Stout, the, uh, the St. George's, the, um, the Cedar School, all these schools are going to be having graduations and a number of persons are going to be coming out. Some of them are going to be looking jobs. We need to start a dialogue about jobs, help the, help the young people. I have a text that came in. Want jobs for the young people? Government needs to offer early retirement packages for persons who have not put in 25 years of service or 60 years of age. There's such a thing in place already, Carla. I, 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 I understand where you're coming from, but it is in place already. You can retire from government services from, I think, as early as 20 years. Um, 20 years of service. So that's already in place, and the, the 60 years, that, that one is also in place as well. So we'll wait and we'll see. I don't, I, I'm not sure if, if that is the problem, though. I'm not sure if that's the problem. Uh, we have some situations where I'm going to throw out a couple of other things. We need some of, some of the, the issues I, I think of in the, in the workplace is retraining. We have some people who, are not, who don't have the requisite training for the new job market. Uh, I'm referring to things like uh, the, the te technological changes in the workforce. I'm referring to the, the, the safety changes in the workforce. A number of things like that that, that would require uh, retraining of some of our people to be able to command those jobs. And I'm also going to throw out another one that may not resonate too well with some people, but there's some jobs that I feel should be reserved for nationals. And I think that we, we, have, um, we have probably overlooked that area. And it is something that we need to consider. I would never forget going to New York after 9-11 uh, after 2001, and uh, and the scrutiny that was put on, on on persons after that incident, and I think one of the one of the things that came out of that was the the, the TRS, the, this um, this organization that that mans all the airports, and one of the requirements for that organization is you must be a citizen to work in that position. We don't have those kind of requirements in some of our key positions in the service. And I think it's about time that somebody understand the security issues of the country and develop such a policy to ensure that some jobs are, uh, are reserved for nationals. We have a text that came in. That's a lie. Why was Fraser shocked on election day to see so much people he never see voting in the third? Fraser didn't have to buy votes because he takes care of his people. You know, we're going we're gonna, to, it looks like we're going to have this back and forth dialogue, but it's good. Believe me, it's good. Uh, the, the, as far as I know, no one is allowed to enter into the, um, into the election box with another person. Even if you're help assisting someone, there are rules for assisting someone to vote. So, you know, anyone can say anything and, oh, by the way, I was following the elections in South Africa, and that was an issue in South Africa where persons were going into the election booth and using a cell phone and taking a picture of themselves voting. And that is something that we have to be mindful of here as well because that is something that can very, very well happen here in our territory. So we need to, you know, we need, we need to, we need to learn from other people's experience as well. Try to educate the young people. Try to try to have start the dialogue now and and and, uh, and prevent things like that from happening because something like that could be very um, could be very negative in the election process where a person will have a picture of themselves voting for a particular person and and maybe maybe use it as fraud. So so ladies and gentlemen, we need to step up the electronic the electronic information about voting, the, the educate the public about ele election fraud, and put measures in place to prevent it from happening in the first place. And, we, you know, we, and we'll be all happy at the, at, the, at the end of our next election. It's, it's whether, you know, it's just a matter of time now. A person must be saying, 
But the Castro election, nobody didn't even say it's going to have election. You, you're here acting as if election is coming next week. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not acting as if election is coming next week. But I'm um, starting a dialogue with the community, a well-deserved dialogue. That we need, to, we need to talk about a number of things that we don't talk about. And when you talk about things, sometimes you hear another person's opinion, and that shapes your opinion. So don't be afraid to text or call. You know, this is, we're still under the Constitution, the 2007 Constitution, which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, guarantees all citizens innocence until proven guilty. It used to be the other way around before the Constitution. And, and I don't think enough things have been put in place to remind persons of that simple statement. But it is a, a fact that in our constitution, you're, in, you're innocent until proven guilty. And, and while we're talking about that, we, we, we have to stop the practice of incarcerating people and then trying to prove whether they're innocent or, or, or not. I think um, that, that whole process has gone way out of way out of um way out of proportion i mean i can understand uh, um less than a year but two three eight, uh, four five years I, I think that's really unreasonable and really ridiculous and really a mockery of the justice system but you know that's my opinion and and um and and i i think that we we as a, a country you know, I know, the, I know the bloggers like to listen to me and, and take me out of context when they feel like, but as a country, as a, as a, as a, a number of people living in a, in a territory, we have to take grip with some of these hard issues and try, and try to rally around each other and try to change these things. We can't allow things to go, you know, go on for years and years and, 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 uh, and affect families and, and persons' lives and all of that stuff and, and not talk about it. I mean, we could do more than talk about it. We could put pen to paper. And we can, um, and we can, you know, ensure that some of these things don't happen. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, the election, election reform, uh, election fraud, the switch project, jobs, the graduations that are coming up. You know, I, I'm, I'm personally going to, going to express, um, you know, uh, congratulations to all the people who are going to be graduating in June. Um, the, you know, education is the key to success. Uh, I have some people who say if you don't think if you don't think education is expensive, try ignorance. Um, the United Negro College College Fund has a, a, a slogan that says um, that says something like that that, that um, promotes education. And as far as I know, here in the territory, we have always had persons in leadership position promoting education. And although some of our elders didn't get the type of education that some of us got. They have always been in the forefront of, of ensuring that the very young the, 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 and, and all the people in the territory get a, a good education. And, and that is something that changes lives. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, education changes lives. And, and I mean, you only have to, to listen to some of the success stories of some of the students and you'll realize that a lot of the things that, that students are able to accomplish, they're able to accomplish it through higher education. And, and not, to, not to forget those athletes and to, and to put it out there as well, ladies and gentlemen, that athletics can propel a student even further if they use education and athletics at the same time, they, I mean, we, we, we better say the sky is the limit. And I have, I, I, have seen, I, have, I have seen that among a number of young people that I've been following in the territory, and that is good. That is something good. And whenever I have to interact with them, I always tell them they have a special place with me. In other words, if I can, if I can assist them in any way, I will try my best to assist them because I know that it's, it's difficult to be an athlete and be a student at the same time, but guess what? That is the way to go, and that is a positive way to go. And I take my hat off to them, and I, and I, I salute them in, in, in that in, endeavor. We have two texts that came in. I am a Jamaican living on Anigata. Anigata is big with a lot of wasteland that could build a mini stadium or a horse racetrack or car racing 
please, ministers of this country, pay attention to Anigara. Anigara is a beautiful place. I am a 33-year-old person, and I'm crazy in love with Anigara. Me and you, you, you and I both. <laughs> We, we're both. But the, but the point the, 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 the person, the text is, is making is that Anigara has enormous potential. And let us, let us not be, be, um, be, be, you know, prejudice one island to another. We need to use these islands for what they have, the sun, the sand, the sea. Use what we have to get what we want. Courtney, how much votes you get when you run for politics? Thank you, thank you, my brother. You don't. You, I, I, I could put. I could even put a question out there to ask you if you know what year I ran for politics, and I bet you couldn't even remember. The government need, need to ensure that the hotels provide decent package for those who are retiring and put so many years. Comment, Courtney. Oh, that, 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 is a, that is a very good text that came in there as well. The, 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 um, the sovereign's pay and the, and the retirement package for, for workers, especially in the hotel industry. There has been a number of, um, a number of sad stories. Uh, uh, one of them, which is, very, um, which is very sad, is a number of companies here, they have hotel aid. And sometimes it's for a specific period of time. And just before that aid expires, what happens in a number of instances is the company um, dissolves. And then they come in under a new name. And, and, and uh, so they, 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 don't, they no longer have the obligations that they had before. And they leave the employees. I, listen to me go. They leave the employees holding the, the, the small end of the stick so to speak. And, and we, have to, we have to try our best to guard against these kind of situations. And, and we, have to, we have to preach good, good work ethics. And we have to preach good, um, good stewardship with these companies that we are, uh, that we are given the opportunity to, to, you know, to live and work among us. We have to, we have to be more, um, more vigilant in, in Monitoring what I do, and, and also to to you know to ensure that the people, the people, the, the human resource path of the jobs are not unfavorably treated, and and that um and, and that they're well taken care of. Somebody have to look out for the people, and and and, and we're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back with the minimum wage, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna talk about the minimum wage when we come back. Say hello to the Digicel DL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4-inch display, front-facing camera, and a 5-megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast, so you can do more, play more, and share more. And choose to download from over a million apps available in the Google Play Store. The Digicel DL700, the latest addition to the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Be extraordinary. Digicel. And gentlemen, as I promised you when I come back, we're going to talk about the minimum wage. We, we're still with this um, $4 an hour minimum wage. And it's, uh, as I said on the show uh, the last time, it's about time we, we revisit it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not hearing any, 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 um, any comments on it, um, but I know there are persons out there who are being, you know, who are, uh, who are really affected by what's happening with this and my main issue with it is that the cost of living has increased since the the, the four dollars an hour was put in place and it's only fair to the people who are at that level or below i i also heard that there are, pe there are people who are being paid below the minimum wage which is against the law 
and that that shouldn't happen but people who are at that level and the cost of living has has increased by by uh by a, a certain percentage each year since since the 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 wage the minimum wage was put in place so a recalculation needs to be done to ensure that those persons can still take home you know a decent salary and provide a put 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 a a reasonable bread basket on the table um you know the it, i i did my own research on this I, I i went to the stores and i checked the price of milk egg butter cheese you know a couple of items and 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 uh and after looking at uh the house rent looking at transportation the fact that we don't have public transportation um pers a, a number of persons you know you know use various types of transportation and if you look at all these factors and you look at how a person might survive in our tourism economy with with such a high uh inflation rate you would realize that 4000 an hour does not really cut it and we need to do like other countries we need to you know to review what's what's happening and and uh and 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 change ladies and gentlemen the myself you know this this probably will not affect me and some of you listening to the television it may not affect you as well but there are people out there who need help who it will affect and let us let us be mindful that we are all citizens you know in, in this world with the same wants and needs and aspirations and some people have to who can do better can look out for people who are less fortunate and people who are um you know in a in a position of 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 less um wealth than you may have maybe it's, maybe it's time we start being our brothers keeper and and uh and and look out for less fortunate people as a, as an aside as 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 a way of saying something to to complement what i just said then what persons make as a salary for a year let me say that again so people understand some of our elected officials allowance and this is nothing to do with a salary this is an allowance is more than what some people in the civil service makes for a, for a salary for a year i have a text let's see what it says it said people being paid below the minimum wage are obviously here illegally and that's why they are not making reports to the labor department that's that's your opinion but uh when you walk in the shoes of some of the people who i'm talking about then you can make a statement Good evening ladies and gentlemen you've reached speaking mind go right ahead please Good evening Mr. Pastor Good evening How are you tonight Oh I'm doing well how is, how about you how is how how about yourself I'm doing great thanks Good we you want you have something on your mind you want to talk you want to talk to the Virgin Islands community mm, Yes sir thank you for the opportunity Go right ahead I'm calling from Virgin Islands Okay Good so express my mind I'm finding the difference between our country and traveling out to other countries the way we can be treated. Earlier in May, I left from here and I went to Ohio to my child, my daughter graduation. I was treated with respect, love, courtesy from St. Thomas. to Ohio and back. I have spent as a senior and been treated as a senior, have been treated as a senior in a different country. Mm -hmm. To be very honest with you, I am one of the first, as a senior, the first to even board in a car. Mm -hmm. And everybody treat us with love and respect. My children who have started with me, when they, when they start the, 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 
first class preference that I have as a senior. You said to me, um, really, it's so, it, 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 it feels so nice, it feels so good because of you. We have been treated in the first class, in the first class service. So I said, you see how it's all nice to treat them. If I told about that, and I mean, it's really a pearl, it's really a pearl feeling for anyone to really receive. I went, I came back, it was the same thing. I, I'm to be very honest with you, I mean, I don't even know how to walk up the steps to go in the aircraft. I grew up in the aircraft with the airlift. Okay. And I entered the, air, the aircraft through the cockpit, and I'm one of the first person to board the aircraft. That's the way they treat seniors outside of the DVI. I went, I came back, I had all that love, courtesy, and every bit of respect, and everything else that goes along with it. When I came back, if, um, when I came back, the little young lady who took me from the, the entrance of the terminal into the luggage train area, she was so sweet. It's like all that I can feel that little young woman. She was so sweet, extra sweet. She said to me, she said, Miss, she just leaned over. She said, Miss, are you okay? You feel all right? I mean, it makes me feel so, it gives me a different life. It gives me a different spirit. I said, on, I, she was, when I said, no, she was just, no, I said, look at the difference. She was exchanged my whole life that afternoon. I came home, that was after 7 o'clock. I said, we up for around 4 o'clock in the morning to leave Ohio to get back here. Come back home in my own country. I was told by an immigration officer. Now, see, you have a person, if you travel with a family member, my daughter took my passport and my declaration form in. It's not the first time. I'm a person to go to St. Thomas and come back. And somebody put it. If there's no one traveling with me, or with someone else, I say, well, if that is your senior, let me take your paper in, and um, you can um, sit on the wall and play. Well, I feel sad about that. But here I am coming home from, from a long, long day back into my country. I am going to be greeted by an immigration officer who is telling me, um, I'm not supposed to stay outside. I'm supposed to go inside my line like everybody else. Even though I'm an old woman, I still supposed to go in line. Um, I can be put head of the line and um, get a preference to come out for and all those kind of things. Then I listen very carefully and I let that immigration officer express himself. And I said, you cannot be greeting me as an old woman. I am a senior. And I'm just coming back home from being out of my country. I met from when I traveled, went to Ohio. And I never heard anything like this. I had been treated with first class service. I had been treated with love, respect, courtesy, and everything else. And here you are telling me in my own country that I'm an old woman and I am supposed to. I don't have a preference and I don't have a privilege as a senior. And um, if everybody sees them, I say, I can even show that and for that we want to do the same thing. All those types of things. Now, that made me sad as though I was not somebody in my country because I felt very much sad. I felt very much sad. I took it, it, it took everything out of me that was in that I came back home with. In my own country, that's the best thing that any immigration officer, the immigration officer could have told me. Is that I'm an old woman, you know I'm an old woman. This is a very bad thing to tell anybody. It really hurt me. And I'm supposed to say to him, man, whereas I think Anybody, everybody, every senior should have a preference. If you can't, if, if you have a preference outside of your country, I think you should be greeted with love and the same courtesy and respect inside your own country. I felt very much disrespected, the 
and trotting, and it's really healthy for days. Mm-hmm. And I'm expressing my mind tonight because I've heard people in Tartona on the same talk show speaking about some immigration officers and the way they speak to people and what they say, and I'm adding mine to the list tonight. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. This is not good enough. This is not good. I'm and I think this is what we need to look into. I'm, I'm sorry you had such a bad experience because um, I myself travel and I, I see some of the same thing you, things you are speaking about. I see people with, with small children, a, little bit, one, a woman with a small child in one hand and a baby in the other hand. And I think that those persons should get best um, uh, preferred treatment. I see also in the banks where elderly people go into the banks and they have to stand in the same line with everybody else and we all know that the banks can do a better job. They can, they can have prefer, prefer treatment for elderly people. And, and, um, and not just a line, not just an extra line to, to say that you could stand in another line, but you know, pull the people out, pull them out and, and, and deal with them as, as senior citizens. Deal with them as the people who build this country. When the, when the, the, um, the, the minimum wage was, was, was $2 or, or 150 and they they put in the the hard sweat and 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 blood in some instances and and now now when there's milk and honey and a better country we we have we have dropped the ball and forget that these were these are the same people who build the country when it needed to be built so miss i'm 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 uh, i'm in agreement with you that we need to treat our senior citizens much better than how we are treating them and and not not only senior citizens from here but se- all senior citizens even the ones that come from, from uh, that, that, that are tourists, I see them, uh, you know, in some instances being treated the same in the same way you were dis- describing. You know, and that's, well, that's I, not I, good. I really, I, I really think, I was just a thing I have been saying to myself, when if I'm, if I'm a senior here, and I'm treated like this, I question myself, is this the way you treat a stranger coming from Korea? Mm-hmm. And I am a stranger in a foreign country, and I can be treated with so much respect. It it all boils down to policy, you know. If we, if we, we can probably can't blame the individual person at the at the uh, at the front line, but policies are meant to be put in place, and then you know persons will will follow follow through on the policies. But I think I agree with you. This is a policy that we need to ask for and 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 to ensure that we get it. Starting from the you know from the the government level all the way down to the tourist board and and the immigration and customs and all the all the all the frontline people, we have to demand that they treat people with disabilities and senior citizens. I'll even I'll even go a step further. In, I, I think I think as well, people who served in the military should probably get some kind of um, some kind of uh, treat good treatment as well because these are people who have uh, ensured our safety over the years and I, 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 I can remember riding on a train in Europe where people the military got the, the first preference in the in, in the first in the first car the first car was resolved if you had any military people on board for, for them to, to ride in the first car so we as a community have to ensure that these kind of policies are put in place because they are good policies and because they respect humanity. I say that I say don't need nobody to tell them that you're only one other to your own land. That is that it's an honor respect. it's an honor to 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 it's an honor to it's an honor to tell anybody and work like that because but but ma'am it's an honor to to become old i mean not everyone is going to become old <laughs> you know it's a, it's an honor to 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 have preserved yourself you know do the things necessary to 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 have a a, a good age so i don't I, I i think i think the the opposite of that is that we should be recognizing persons who have who have who have and while we're talking about it i i spoke about this al- al- already as well i don't know if you agree with me but the social security act which um which is in in contradiction to government retirement government retirement is 60 years and then you have to wait five years for the social security act to start paying paying out um um uh, contributions and i think that one of them need to talk to the other 
either the government need to talk to themselves or Social Security need to talk to the government and they need to make this two years coincide. And, 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 and this is something I think that would, you know, would, 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 um, would go, go best with our seniors. And when we're talking about it again, another issue too is that a lot of seniors, we need to develop a, si a system where seniors could have an identification card. The only kind of identification cards we have right now is a driver's license and uh, some of our seniors do not drive. But if you have an identification card that you can flash, maybe that might be a passport to get the kind of service that we're talking about as well, especially when it comes to the banks and other, other places like that. What do you think? I love you. I love you. Okay. Well, thanks and for sh I, I, I told myself that after working all these years, send my tax to the government, send my tax to everybody else. When I was younger and I was into working on paying tax, and when I, when I started to work, I was even working for Dana, but I was working for, for Alexander the Cops of Smith. Even wasn't, even wasn't, wasn't dollars. Okay. So to be, not to be disrespectful in this kind of a manner, I would think the government, is, um, in some ways, the government wouldn't need to get into this situation and see that people be treated with respect, whether you're from here or you're coming in here, wherever you go, and you are a senior, you should be treated with the same respect and love and courtesy. I agree. Well, thank you very much for sharing this with us. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we had a very good dialogue there with the, the lady, and it involves how we... How we treat our seniors and I think it's 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 high time that we put some policy in place that that's across the board that 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 is that is uh, at the ports of entry the banks you know everywhere we have a number of texts I'm going to try and go to them real quickly I said Courtney good night your phone is not clear I'm going to report that. I'm going to report that that phone is not clear and see if, they, see if they get it corrected. Good night. Why the government is not paying people? They have people who work, who work for the government for months and can't get paid. You can't owe the government, you will get locked up. How they want the young men them to feed and family, they need to do better. They want them to go and thief and how they will pay child support. The texter, if, you, if, if, if you're not getting paid, you really need to, you know, you need to, you need to step it up and, and try and get paid. Um, it's not fair for anyone, government or anybody else, to work people and then not pay them. I'm working, another text, I'm working in BVI and I would like to send for my child in Jamaica for summer holidays, does my child require a visa? I'm not sure if your child requires a visa. I think you have to call passport um, office and and, uh, and and find out. Um, I think at one point they had a program. I don't know if the program is still in place, but call passport office and, and ask them. A text that came in, it says, I'm getting $4 an hour for 14 years. Now I think that's ridiculous. And the condition in which workers work is unpleasant. That, ladies and gentlemen, is, is uh, again, don't forget, we have, we, have, um, we have situations where employers are supposed to have a, a, a workable environment for workers to work in. So if that is the situation, you probably need to report that your working conditions are not well. There are a number of, of agencies that can deal with that type of issue, the labor department, the they, um, there's a, a branch of, um, of the solid waste department that deals with, um, with working conditions as well. So you need, to, you need to seek to get proper working conditions if you don't have. But the $4 an hour for 14 years, ladies and gentlemen, we have to, we have to remind all good persons in this community who employ people that ethics is something that they need to to keep in the forefront of the, the business policy. And, uh, and remember that it's all good to be a greedy capitalist, but in the process of doing that, sometimes you hurt people. And, and um, you know, try and be fair and, 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 and look, at, look at life uh, from, a, from a, 
the, from a, a different vanish, vanishing point, realizing that life is a continuum, it's a, it's a circle, it's a cycle, and it, is a, it, it operates like a circle. We go around and we come around. And it's always good to, to treat people uh, with respect and dignity. Ladies and gentlemen, we, 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 um, we're well into the show. We've, we've touched on a number of topics, election, election reform, <laughs> and, um, and I'm going to come back talking about some other, some other stuff here, so uh, in particular about the census 2010, which we're going to get some up, up, uh, upbeat, up, update on at some point. But right now we're going to take a break for the, the sponsors that make the show possible, and we're going to be right back with you. Say hello to the Digicel DL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4-inch display, front-facing camera, and a 5-megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast, so you can do more, play more, and share more. And choose to download from over a million apps available in the Google Play Store. The Digicel DL700, the latest addition to the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Be extraordinary. Digicel. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with you. We had a short break for the sponsors that make the show possible. And I said that when we come back, we're going to talk about the census, census 2010. We're still awaiting to hear when the information is going to be delivered to us. This is, this is four years now, and we're still waiting. Again, ladies and gentlemen, one of the reasons why I'm asking for this information because planners, architects, um, people who, who are involved with, with planning projects. We need this type of information. I'll give you a good example. If, if a school is to be built in a particular area, we need to know how many children we have in that area. We need to, we need to, um, we need to know how many, how many vehicles pass in a particular area based on the numbers. If you, if you have a, a, a growth in a particular area, you might have to provide more services in that area, etc. We need that type of information on a 10-year basis. And it's now, since the last census, is now 14 years. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking, I'm begging, uh, and I want more people to join me and demand Yes, ladies and gentlemen, demand that we get the census report. It is important for us, especially coming up to an election. We need to know how many people are in the territory. We need to have an idea of how many voting people are going to be in the, in the various districts. We need to know the size of the district. Uh, we, we, when, when you know the size of the district, you can, you can make calculations as to I'll give you an, a hypothetical situation. We can look at a district and we can say District X. And we could say District X has 600 people in it. And then we can say, out of that 600 people, only 400 can vote. And then we can go down further and say, of the 400 who can vote, there are 200 of them who are um, between the ages of 20 and, and, and 25, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are the kind of, this is the kind of information we can, we can garner from proper data and this is the information age and without information you, you know you you, um, you 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 don't have any wealth so unless people are purposely holding this information from the public from us and and that would that would be a, a, a you know a very negative thing to do to have to, we the people pay for this information to be collected and 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 um, and tabulated, and it's being held from us willfully. I would say at this point, because four years is willfulness. 
and uh, and we need information we need to be able to make uh, you know informed decisions rather than guessing and making assumptions you have the information that you can you can further analyze and 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 make sense out of it so ladies and gentlemen let us let us do all part let us ask for the information let us let us demand the, in, the information and let us get a timeline of when we'll get this information uh, doing business in the virgin islands is, is another topic i wanted to 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 talk about and the summer months are here on us and and we're going to have people coming and and uh, and doing various various things in the territory. Some of them looking after after uh, family business, etc. And sometimes I go to the phone. Good evening. You're very speaking mind. Go right ahead, please. Good evening. Good evening. Mister Cash is talking about the center. About what? The center. The center. The census. Yes, the the census. Yes. We need to get the people of the British Virgin Islands who are living in the British Virgin Islands to cooperate with government to complete the census. The census. The people in the BVI, living in the BVI, local and non-local, are not cooperating with the government. If they would cooperate, the census would have been finished a long time ago. You, you have to explain yourself, though. I, I, don't, I don't understand what you mean by cooperate. There are one or two laws that say if a person do not answer the question, they can be prosecuted or they can pay a fine. That probably needs to be in solved so that people would realize when the investigators come to their homes, they need to cooperate with them. So, so, so you're saying that that is the reason why the census isn't completed? That is basically the, big, the biggest reason. As the government is strict with their laws, mm -hmm. then put people in jail or make them PFC a sign, mm -hmm. this census would have been finished. Mm -hmm. But just the counting of people, you could count people without asking them questions? You know what's the problem with the, what's the problem with the information oh, that they have? The people are asking the question if the people when they come to the house refuse to tell you who are in their house. You don't know who lives in their house. <laughs> nice excuses for the people, but from but that's the excuses you're making for the people. No, but stop making excuses for the, the people. Let other people cooperate. There are a number of things that they can do as well. You can look at a house. If a house has five meters on it, obviously there are five families living in that house. But how would you know how many persons live in a family? But you, at least you have an idea of how many people live in a, live in a house by the number but of meters they have in a house. But you have a correct census. It's not that, I don't think it's that, it's that, um, that complicated to, that to, do a, to do a census. And, and this is, this, the last census we had took seven years. This one is going on four years now. And they, they, I don't the biggest think problem is the people need to cooperate. Well, if we have the law in place and we refuse to use the law that we have in place, we are at fault as well. We are we are just as a, as as at, at at fault if we refuse to cooperate, and not only that, we have a we have a um, a, a labor issue, or a labor policy, where we we are we are we are we are, we, are, we, are, we have as many work permit entrants into the country as we have people about twenty years ago. I'm referring to the ten thousand years. I'm the t sorry, the ten thousand persons. At one time, this country had ten thousand people. Now we, we have a policy where we have about 10,000 work permit holders and we've, we, maybe that is the reason why we are, we are unable to, you know, to report on the, the, the situation in the country. Maybe. These things are not going to go away. Those numbers are not going to change by the census um, questions. We need to know what is the status of the country as far as in, um, um, uh, the population is concerned. There, there are much bigger have a issues. Lot of people across the board. I, I didn't get what you're saying. Uh. Not cooperating. There are a lot of people not cooperating. Then it's going to be a big problem. Maybe. And I'm, that's the biggest problem. I am suggesting. I'm suggesting to you maybe they're not cooperating because of of, of the the whole um 
um, issue of workers in the first place because we have we have some people here who are immigrant workers who who are maybe living in some in some uh, uh, un, unheard of conditions. Well, we need to find out those land orders. Yeah, but we are the ones. We are the ones who have invited those people into the country ourselves. You can't invite a person into your country and then and then and then um, prosecute them. Yeah, the government needs to come down on those people. Sorry. The government needs to come down on those people. The government is the same people who given them the, the um, permit to be here, my dear lady. Because it's going to cause a havoc in our country. I, he I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, you know, it's a good thing that we're talking about it because people need to really come to grips with the situation. And, and, and uh, look, one of, my, one of my things as a professional, right, is to look after health, safety, um, living conditions, um, um, fresh air, uh, um, light, and all those things when, we, when we're working. As I'm, I'm, I'm describing my work as an architect, okay? And... We're, we're not able to do a proper job in that area because of this same type of issue. And no, no one is paying attention to it. And it's really sad. It's really I sad. About to wake up. Well, we, did, we, we sure need to do that. Maybe we need to go down in front of the complex and demand jobs because when they're bringing in people from outside and then all your men and your ladies on the street using drugs, cocaine, and crack. And then you wonder what is wrong with the young people. They're not getting fully occupied. I, I, hear what, I hear what you're saying. And, and, and um, if you look at the various economic models, you would, you would see that uh, we're, we're, in my opinion, we're making a situation like what you're described, what you're describing, which is not healthy. That is, if you have an oversupply of labor and you have young persons who are nationals coming into the workforce and they're not gainfully employed, they're obviously going to find themselves in a in a, in a um in an unfortunate situation. And that is something that we should be trying our best to prevent. I don't know about you, but when, when I was started out working, you just went you just went and, and uh and looked for a job and you got a job. It is not that way anymore. It is not that way for all young people. I've seen all young people going to college i've seen them you know putting a resume together i've seen them doing all these things and they still can't find a job because you're bringing people to people labor you can't get a census done mm -hmm. you need to stand up mm -hmm. and start to be man thank you very much right all right thank you yes ladies and gentlemen that's one person there expressing their opinion about the way our job market is going and some of the things that we probably need to do to to monitor what's happening and to and to correct uh, where we can. I have a text that came in. I have a call that came hi, in. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. You're speaking mind. Go right ahead, please. Yes. Good evening, um, Courtney. Yeah. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been in government a long time, Courtney, and you're very familiar with a lot of the government laws yeah. and all that stuff, isn't that so? Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, any law whereby uh, anyone is exempted, whether senior, young, anything exempted from passing through immigration and customs lines? Um, I don't know. I don't know of that, but I've seen it happen. Yeah, but, but they're not exempted, though. I'm not sure if they're exempted, but I, like I said, I've seen it happen. I have seen persons go through go, go through the airport and through the the um the seaport without clearing any anybody. Um, but when you come from a foreign place and you from the side, you know that you are supposed to be clear. Isn't that correct? I think so. Yeah. You think so? According to you, know so. I know so. Yeah, I know so. All right. Well, hey, it's, you know, it's a, well <laughs> it it would make it to me it would make sense from a um from a security point of view and also from a from a training point of view if you're training officers to to be vigilant and to and to monitor you know the situation exactly. would, you would want to exactly. make sure exactly. that they understand to treat persons equally yeah irregardless irregardless you know it mm -hmm. irregardless anybody entering a country from a foreign port mm -hmm. it should be cleared 
by God custom immigration. Man, don't, 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 you, 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 you know that you know that entire issue is totally out of hand. I've seen persons walk with fifteen passports and walk up the road and go and, and, and um and present them to the officer. So that, that situation needs correcting. That yeah, is but, but, but that, 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 to present to the officer. Suppose you don't suppose you don't come to the immigration officer at all. This is, this is as far as I know, that's illegal entry. Okay, right. That's illegal entry. Go. That's illegal entry. Um, okay, so then we need to let people know whether you whether you're from a, a country, are you from a country? If you don't clear, then your entry is illegal. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Well, okay. So when people would say because they they from a particular country and you're from here, and you don't have to clear, then that's a wrong concept. It, 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 it is. It is a. It is a. It is a. have to be clear. It is a. It is a wrong concept. Okay, so we just want to bring clarity to the same particular situation. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you have somebody who is elderly, mm -hmm. and they come in line, and we see elderly people in line, more than likely, mm -hmm. the most elderly people are clear them as soon as possible, so they don't have to stand in line and wait for a long period of time. Exactly. But from line, the bottom line, Courtney. You have to pass through immigration and custom. Uh, and, and and security? Of course. So when people want to say blatantly, they mean going through the immigration, you ain't going through mm -hmm. custom. Mm -hmm. No. It's the wrong concept and you're in violation. You're in violation of, of, of all laws. You regardless where you're from here and other people need to know that. What? And be free to, to tell people this is the truth of me. We got we got cut this our country, we are presenting and we're protecting our battles. You got to do the right thing. Carla, I was I was in a line behind a, a, a politician one day and I was saying to her she should identify herself and go and go forward, but then she, she didn't do it. And then one of the officers came and they asked her to come and, and they and they process her through the line. Exactly. No no that no that is in my opinion that is why I call heads up for the right. for the for the, um, well, for, the, the for the officers. It's the, same way. it's the same way we got elderly people in line, you know that the other people in line. You move them through. If somebody, if somebody even can't walk, well, that's totally something different. But even if they can't walk and you come in a wheelchair, you still have to come through the immigration line. No, you no. have to come through the If you don't come through, how, how in the world do you know who, who enter from who enter? No, let me ask what, you. What, what, kind of, what kind of um, banana republic are you running? No, no, let me ask you. You this thing. No, let me ask you. Huh? Now let me ask you a question now though. Do yeah. you do you have do you have those kind of facilities there on standby for people to use wheelchairs and, and, and other devices like that? Well the truth is um, the truth is Courtney. You don't the cargo of the vessel that bring these people will be the ones who will be responsible. No, 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 I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Yeah, we, the we, we, of the vessel, other port other other authority will be able to have those um, we, not immigration and we need to step it we need to we need I am saying we need to step it up as far as services that we're offering because if I don't know if you know this but I have noticed that we are getting older people traveling. Have you have you noticed that? Of course. E even on the cruise ship. Yeah. Who who who's supposed to be providing these things for people? Who's supposed to be providing who you saying supposed to be providing like a wheelchair for people? English the people and who they who they when you, you yeah, when you're going on a plane, the the the, um, the airliners provide a wheelchair for you. Right. You, you have to and request you, it, right? But 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 but, you but the situation you, you were describing. You are you're a passenger on that boat. Who who would be more likely to assist the person? You, you spend your money in the boat, right? Yeah, but the situation oh, you were describing to me, right? I was huh? I was the situation you were describing to me, where if you take it upon yourself to assist somebody, maybe I was just suggesting, maybe you should have something like that available as well. But you know, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to to push that any further. You know, Courtney, I, 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 I referring to you from an officer for interview. You know? Yeah, I, I understand. Right. I understand. So after telling you know, we have you know, pushing a wheelchair, after preparing individual people. I just saying that these things, as you say, yes, we should have it. And if we see the need, we move the people from the bottom line is straight up. What about my point? What about my point that I said? I think that um, there's some positions that should be reserved for nationals. What 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 is your take on that? When you when you say position reserved for national women, some positions, some especially some frontline positions. Security positions should be reserved for nationals only. That's that's what I said. I I I asked you what you think about that. 
Uh, we do have we do have that in almost every country whereby you would see a line saying visitors, you would see a line saying residents. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, the officers working. <laughs> you ain't getting me at all. I'm okay. talking yeah, about yeah. job security. Okay, job security. Yeah, I'm saying I think that there's some positions that should be that should be um, reserved for nationals only. Anyways, I, I, you will hear me speaking. Well, well, um, all over the world, I'm um, um, Courtney, and you know it. This mm -hmm. is like um, mm -hmm. when it comes to your national security, your yeah. national. You, yeah. you, we all wouldn't know where where um, we consider your national security. National yeah. security have to be controlled by your own people. Nationally, national security can't be in foreign hands, Courtney. Okay. Anyway, Carla, I, I I reached the end of the show, and I really have to wrap up. But I wish I had Carla well, a little earlier because it sounded like we could yeah. have had a real good dialogue here tonight. Yeah, I just want you to be as a big man because you're working. You can't bring don't let people tell you to something that you can't carry for it. People okay. need to care. All right, all right, my brother. All right, God, be cool. Okay, bye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we 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 wrapping up the session. We we even out the time. We gotta go. The election. We, we we were able to cover some, a couple of topics on election, election reform, voting, the picture ballot, the election fraud. We we were able to show the sewage project that's already started in the Rotown area and running. Talked about jobs. I talked about HLSCC graduation. June 12 coming up. We talked about the high school, the high schools that are going to be graduating now, young people. The census 2010. We're still waiting on it. The minimum wage is still at $4. Um, and we're talking about uh, our constitution that guarantees innocent until proven guilty. Uh, so don't go trying people until you, you know, until you have the facts. Uh, doing business in the Virgin Islands, and I wanted to talk about a photovoltaic uh, PV panels, and I didn't get a chance. It's just, just a couple of dollars, just maybe about $4,000, and we can have a bunch of homes here up and running. So we're going to talk more about that. Ladies and gentlemen, we had an awesome show. We had a number of texts that came in and a number of, of calls, including somebody who wanted to know how many votes I got when I, when, when I ran for the election. Um, we had a very good show. And at this time, I'd like to say God bless these Virgin Islands and the people that live in them. And I'll see you again next week.